Hey guys, welcome to Sperling TV, episode number four. This is, for those who are new to this, this is a uh, weekly video that I chat about two or three topics that kind of came up uh, over the last week on fitness, nutrition, mindset, uh, personal development, stuff like that. If you are new to this, you can always go back and watch previous episodes. If you have questions for future episodes, please just drop them in the comments below. Um, today I want to talk about three things, injuries, a little bit of a uh, nutrition, and then uh, more of, a, more of a, a law, I guess we can call it, that I, I read this week and it really resonated with me. So we'll first start with the injuries. Um, for those who don't follow us on a regular basis, uh, you may not know last week I was deadlifting in the gym and uh, suffered a pretty severe, in, in my case, I've been pretty fortunate, not really have had to, I haven't really had to deal with too many injuries, a couple broken ankles in high school, but nothing really too, too bad. Um, and last week in the gym, I was trying a new technique with the deadlift and uh, severely pulled my, my lower back and was basically, um, you know, crawling my way out and woke up the next morning, not being able to get out of bed, etc., etc. So by far the most uh, severe injury I've ever had to deal with. But my point for bringing that up is I think when it comes time to injuries, that can be a major kind of halt when it comes time to your progress, either in fitness or nutrition. And so a couple kind of lessons that I learned from that and things that I think that may be valuable to you uh, should you ever unfortunately suffer from an injury. The first thing is uh, I knew from the uh, point that it happened that it was going to be a solid five, ended up turning out to be almost a full week before I could before I could uh, get back into the gym. So the first thing I did was definitely taper down nutrition because because I'm not burning as many calories, I don't need to intake as many. So uh, when, you know, probably cut my calories back between 500 and 750 calories a day um, just so that I wouldn't put on excess weight due to basically um, being pretty inactive most of the day. Um, I, I also think that this injury specifically being with the lower back, that's kind of the central of your body. So it, it was really limiting, um, as far as what I could do. And I'll, and I'll see, I'll show you how that ties back in a minute, but, um, with the spine, because that's so central to your body, it pretty much affects every single move that you do. It's not like a wrist injury where you just have to worry about the wrist and everything else is fine. The spine is your, is your kind of your center point. So every move that you make, um, you know, it's going to be affected by it. So for the first two or three days, I really couldn't do anything. Definitely kind of took doctor's orders and, and rested. Um, but after that, what I found was that resting actually made it worse. So I started by just going around my, uh, I live in a cul-de-sac, just started going around uh, in the cul-de-sac, going for a short walk, doing some uh, light stretching and foam rolling. And then within seven days was back into the gym doing very light body weight stuff. And now I'm, I would say I'm probably about 95, 90, 95 to 100% um, back into it. Still haven't obviously gotten back into deadlifts, but back into strength training, back into uh, what I would consider mostly my normal routine. And I think, again, a couple lessons for that is you can't mentally, you can't let that stop you. You have to get back into it as soon as you can. I think if somebody suffered a back injury, they may have just laid on a couch for a week and waited for it to stop. As soon as I could walk, I knew that walking was the best thing that I could do for, do for it. Movement was the best thing. Staying still was just going to tighten everything up and spasm everything up even more. So moving was one of the best things I could do. Also, I mentioned, um, I mentioned nutrition and changing your nutrition for your activity level. So knowing that because you're not going to be exercising as much, you alter your nutrition levels. Um, another thing that really I, I don't think was, was specific to my injury, but we get a lot of people who maybe have a shoulder injury or a wrist injury or an elbow injury or a knee injury, and they just totally stop exercising together. Um, I think in my opinion, uh, you know, obviously I'm not a medical doctor and I would always side with what the medical doctor recommends. However, we know that if I have a wrist or an elbow injury, that means that I have a core and three other limbs that I could be working. And we know that, you know, uh, if I have a knee injury, that's one other leg and two other, uh, you know, your two arms and your core that I still could be working. And I think more so for the mental side of things, 
I wanted to, I know when I was injured, I wanted to as quickly as I could get back into it because I knew the longer that I went without doing anything, even if it was just something small, like going in and foam rolling, um, it, it, the, the harder it was going to be to get back. So as soon as, if you have an injury, as soon as it's safely possible, um, I would start as much as you can, you know, you can completely avoid the actual area of the injury, um, but the other areas of the body, the other, the if it's a, like I said, if it's an extremity, the other three limbs and the core, you could easily work, or even just going on the treadmill and going for a walk, coming in and foam rolling and stretching, all of those things, all of those things, I don't think it's necessarily sure there's a direct physical benefit of that, but I think for more so, we know that exercise is a habitual thing, you need to continue to create a habit, so when you are, uh, when you break that habit, it's, the longer that you go without doing it again, it's going to be harder to get back. So again, I think when you're injured, one of the biggest things I learned was A, alter nutrition, but B, get back into it as soon as I can in a modified way so that I don't lose that habit. Um, so hopefully we never have to deal with that, but I know injuries uh, at some point are, are pretty much unavoidable. So hopefully that can be a couple uh, lessons for you when that, when and if that does occur. The next uh, topic I wanted to talk about was a little bit more on nutrition. I had some questions from some clients on uh, meal frequency. And I think that is another, the nutrition in my opinion is one of the the biggest uh, industries known for internet myths, and uh, it, it can be very hard to understand which you know what is right and what to believe. And I think a lot of this stems back to you know the probably so my so like say my parents' generation in the 40s, 50s, and their you know 40s, 50s, and 60s, what they learned as kids we're learning through research that that may not be the same today or you know it may not be as accurate and so they're they're carrying over those habits they're carrying over those that education from when they grew up and still thinking that's true and i think one of the biggest ones the biggest myths is that you have to eat six small meals a day and that meal frequency is going to increase metabolism and is going to you know keep you full etc i think that for a lot of people if eating six small meals a day is it works with your schedule and works for you, and at the end of the day you're still getting the proper amount of protein, carbohydrates, calories, etc., then fine. What I think happened was people took that six small meals, and our version of a small meal is really not a small meal. So all of a sudden they were eating six times a day, but it was actually regular sized meals because our regular sized meals are probably two meals. So the portion size was way off. And all of a sudden, we had people eating six times a day, and they were, you know, um, having excess, excess calories, and then over the course of months and years, gaining a lot of weight. Um, so I just want you to know there is no scientific benefit of eating multiple, you know, multiple times a day, uh, eating more frequently, etc. It does not increase metabolism. Uh, science has kind of proven that wrong. However, I think a lot of this is schedule and behavioral based. So if you can control your portions and you really enjoy eating six small meals a day, as long as at the end of the day, you know, you're supposed to be, say, getting 1,500 calories or, or 2,000 calories, whatever it is for you, um, as long as you're getting that and it's good quality food, it doesn't really matter. That being said, some people I think would benefit greatly from cutting out all the, the snacks and just having three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and eliminate all the snacking because we know that a lot of the calories comes from snacking. Uh, personally, I eat twice a day, so I have a, a late breakfast, more so what most people probably would call a brunch time. I have a large breakfast, usually an omelet, uh, something like that, and then I'll have a large dinner when I get home, and that's it. So it's not right or wrong. It's not that I don't want you to take this and go eat two meals a day. It's that what 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 we've determined is that at the end of the day, it's it's net net. It's how much did you take in versus how much did you burn. And whether you eat that all in one meal or in six small meals, it, it doesn't really matter. You need to decide what is right for your schedule, what is right for your behaviors. If you really enjoy eating large meals like I do, then maybe you only have two really large meals because you get that satisfaction of having a large meal. But at the end of the day, because there's only two meals, it's the same amount of calories as if I divided it up into six. 
And at the same time, if you really enjoy eating frequently, then you just, maybe you eat, okay, so you go back to that eat every two to three hours. Not wrong, as long as your portions are much smaller because you're eating much more frequently. So that's your nutrition tip uh, for this one. And then the last thing I read um, in a book, uh, you know, you have like the Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule stemmed from a, a gentleman named, uh, a, a gentleman with last name Pareto, basically saying that, you know, 20% of the, I'm sorry, 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the people. And that carried over to the whole 80-20 principle. Um, and I think a lot of that is true. And so... For those who are uh, new to it, that's been always known as kind of the Pareto's Law. I read an, another uh, law that I thought was very, very interesting, and I found it tying back to my injury. That's why I brought it up in this one. Um, tying back to my injury, I, I, I found it true while I was home a lot during the injury. And uh, I believe it's called Parkinson's Law. And it basically states that the amount of time you have to do something, you will always fill it with the, the amount of work that you have. So uh, a simpler example, if you have two weeks to do something, it will you'll take two weeks to do it, regardless of what it is. If you have a week to do it, that same thing, and you only have a, that same project, and you only have a week to do it, it will take you a week. If you have six months to do that same project, you will take six months to do it. So relate that to your kids and their homework assignments. Relate that to your fitness goals. And you know, if, if you give yourself six months to lose 10 pounds, it will probably take you six months. If, if you set yourself a goal of uh, three months, it will probably take you three months. You can also relate it, I'll relate it to, to my personal example. I have a, a, a pretty strict to-do list of what I like to get done every single day before I even head into the gym for the day. And what I was finding is I, I was home for about three or four days, didn't go into the gym at all. And what I was finding is I was home much and I could sit there on my laptop all day long. But what was interesting was that even because I had now say eight hours to do the work instead of four, it took me eight hours. And so I think a lot of this, when you look at productivity and how much you get done in a certain amount of time, also setting fitness goals, like I said, that that's the biggest reason why I think I enjoy personal development is it ties so much back to the fitness side of things. So the Parkinson's law, Parkinson's law remember that the, you know, the amount of time that you give yourself to do something, it will always take that long. So next time that you're setting a goal, give yourself a stricter deadline and, uh, and it's amazing if you shorten up the amount of time you have to do something, how much more work you can get done in that amount of time. So guys, those are my three topics for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, Sperling TV, episode number four. I'm pumping these out once a week. So if you have any questions for me for future episodes, you can drop them in the comments below. If you benefited from this at all, please like it, comment it, share it with your friends, whatever. Um, and I look forward to speaking with you guys next week. Take care.